Kevin? Playing with race cars? <laughs> yeah, bumper cars. You never know. <laughs> one of the uh, one of the questions that I get every now and again is, I've got two pieces of pipe and I want to be able to join them together, or I've got two pieces of square tubing and I want to join them together, and I want it to be seamless. So let's say you're working on some project, you're using pipe, you know, you're making a fence, you're making a, you know, a cage, you know, whatever you're doing, and you wind up just a little bit short. You got one piece left, you got a few scraps left lying around, but the biggest piece you got is, you know, two inches too short. Well, you just want to add something to it. And you want to have a nice seam around there, or no seam if you can. You want to be able to have that look like it's just a smooth, straight piece of pipe when you get all done with it. Well, what I do is I'll go ahead and take a couple of pieces and go over to the chop saw. So one thing I'm trying to get in the habit of, get better at, is anytime I come to the chop saw, I always get out a square, get my little framing square. And if I'm going to be making, you know, a 90 degree cut on a piece of metal, I always go in and check right up against the backstop, right against the blade, make darn sure that thing is set right at 90 degrees before I make my cut. So once you know you got a nice square corner going in there, your, your backstop is 90 degrees to your blade, just go ahead and throw your, throw your stock in there. Figure out how much you're going to cut off and just tighten it up. Don't kill it. You don't have to crush it. You don't have to, you know, get a breaker bar on this thing. You just, you know, give it a little snug. It's not going to go anywhere. Don't forget your glasses. Hearing protection. And just go ahead and cut it off. You might turn your sound down just for a minute. Once you got that, you got your two pieces, you got a nice, you know, smooth, even cut on there. I just go over to the, uh, to the bench grinder and just clean up that edge just a little bit. Put a little chamfer on. So, come here. So on this bench grinder, I made a, a slight little modification to it. Not only do I have the stone wheel on here, but I made a little adapter to go on the end of the, of the shaft. And now I can put a little four and a half inch soft pad of my little hand your handheld grinders. So I, I have, you know, variable grits out here, but nothing near as hard as what the stone itself is. So now I just want to dress up that edge a little bit. So I just cleaned up that edge a little, put a little, little bevel on the end of it, just touch the end of the pipe just a little, just to make sure there's no burrs there. So when I jig it on the bench, it'll butt up nice and square and straight. So of course I've just done it to both ends of the pipe that I'm just going to weld together. And all I use is a big piece of really, really thick walled angle iron. So you've got a really nice 90 degree edge down inside here. If you're working with square tubing, you know, you can, you can put it down in that way and clamp it. Or with pipe, fits in there, cradles just nice, everything butts up together, it all lines up, and then you just put a couple of clamps on it. These clamps are called Cant Twist, K-A-N-T-W-I-S-T, -E. and I really like them because of the, the little X here in the, in the bottom pad for this purpose. So you can get down inside there and get it right on the bottom edge of the, of the angle. And it helps kind of lock everything in place. So now we just got a real nice joint right there. Butts up nice and tight. Got a nice little curve through there where I can go ahead and get a weld in. You know, get a bead in where I'll get some good penetration. The pipe will hold. But then I've still got a little bit of leftover where I can go in and just grind it down. Just hit it with a little grinder a little bit. Just to even it out, smooth it out. You know, it'll look like nothing's there. So I'm just running some uh, 160. E3 tungsten, sharpen down to just about a point, and I've got some 160 filler rod because it's such a tiny, tiny little joint right there. 
So now what I like to do with a situation like this is, you know, I've got a clamp down on both sides. I'll come in on both sides of the pipe and get a little tack. So not only is my pipe being held down by the clamps, it's also being held in place by the angle itself. If I come in and just put a little tack on the top and then try to roll it over and get the other side, I'll get a little bow. So tack it on both sides. A little tiny tack at the top here. But do the sides first. Then just roll it over real quick and get a tack on the other side. So now you got it on all four corners, if you will. <laughs> and then you, you can just go ahead and weld. So let's spark it up. So I just got a little tax on both sides. Now I'll just go ahead and get one on the top. And then I'll take my clamps off, roll it over, put the clamps back on, get a tack on the other side. What I normally do is I'll go in the middle of that whole gap and go ahead and get a tack in there. About a quarter to a third of that whole span. Just go ahead and start welding there. Then I can jump over to one side or the other, and then just go ahead and start doing my finished weld. And done. Okay, so I'll just let this cool down a minute or two. I'll just go ahead and grab my little four and a half inch grinder, you know, just clean that off a little bit, smooth that all out, and just turn out just right. straight edge on it. Don't see any light through it. A little, little high spot right there. <laughs> just a little bit of a little, little touch more grinding right there just to take that little high spot down and it should be good. You know, I just used a little 80 grit soft pad on my grinder. Nice long sweeps. You know, nice long passes across the top of that just to get rid of whatever little weld I may have had there that was a little bit a little proud, you know, a little high and blend it all nice and in, you know, blend it all in, come back with like a 120 or something and just scuff it down a little bit more, put some paint on it, and I don't think you'd ever even know it was there. So, great question. Thanks for asking. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.